Ladies and gentlemen, guys and dolls, cats and chicks, you're listening to Viva ENT. We are live today at the Wedding Expo at the Angels of the Wind Arena in Everloa. That's right. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Wedding Expo. I'm talking about wedding vendors. I'm talking about gowns, dancers, brides, grooms, everything that has to do with weddings. And today, I'm proud to announce that I have a new co-host. Her name is Heather. Yeah, and, and she's, uh, she's well experienced. <laughs> and uh, she's going to uh, do most of the interviews today, folks, as I am meeting with clients. So this is Johnny the Capo. You're listening to Viva ENT live from the Tacoma Wedding Expo. I have with me in my booth right now, Horo Sela. And the name of your company, my dear, tell us. The name of my company is Charismatic Choreographies and Events by Rosela. Ay, 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 ay. Now, you guys no, not only have a booth up here, but you're doing some performances as well. Is that correct? That's great. We actually have a booth here today, and the great thing about it is that we're actually going to bring up some brides on stage and show them how different they can dance, have a beautiful surprise dance on their wedding day. Because, you know, you have the typical wedding dance, the boring father-daughter. No, I don't do any of I don't do any of that. Yes, if you, that, if you want the first dance and your father-daughter dance, that's great. But I actually will teach your bridal party to dance so you can do a sexy number for your groom or vice versa. You can do it at your wedding shower. You can do it at your bachelorette. you got to come down here today. It's going to be fantastic. Well, you know, when, once you have a nice uh, dancing crowd, it really makes the wedding reception part really cool. But when you have performers that come in and help people uh, to do the dancing, it makes it phenomenal. Well, and that's the thing. And the thing is, I actually, I'm a performer, but I don't perform on your wedding day. I actually teach the bride that's and her party oh, cool. to dance. So it's actually, it's wonderful. You don't sit there and you're bored with the guests just watching just boring stuff we actually teach you to get up and dance so so your troop uh, uh, does your troop the, the, the gals that dance with you do you guys uh once in a while are hired to, to do wedding receptions? Every now and then, cool. yes. But my focus is to teach the bride and her bridal party oh, cool. to do routines. And I can teach you from salsa, merengue, reggaeton, hip-hop, Broadway, uh, you name like it. You can, sister. You, I'm a dancer. You <laughs> name it, and I will teach you how to dance. It's fantastic. You're a dance, 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 dance machine. Is that right? <laughs> I don't need coffee. Dance is my coffee. <laughs> Great. Uh, Heather, do you have any questions for our lovely guest? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, Heather is in training, but she's doing great. Heather is in training. There you but, go. And, and she just froze up, but she's going she's gonna to come through, folks. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, anything that you can tell our listeners, your website, how, how people can get, get a hold of you the whole nine yards. So my website is... Quinceañera-bridal.dance. Again, that's quinceañera-bridal.dance. Yes, I also do choreography for quinceañeras. I'm originally from Panama, so my native language oh, is Spanish. Nice. So if you She's speak Spanish, I will speak Spanish. Yes, I am a Latina. And the phone number is 206-579-6731. And you definitely want to call us right away. I do book a year in advance. Oh, yeah, I can tell that. No question about it. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Are you going to dance with me later? Uh, I sure could. Okay. And I would. Okay. I, I fix everything. Thank you for the time. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the, I, was, I keep wanting to say the other name, but it's now the Angels of the Wind Arena. Everett. Yes. This is Johnny the Capo. You're listening to Viva ENT. I got one of the most experienced wedding Photographers in the history of Seattle. That's probably because I'm the oldest. Uh, well, you, I don't. I wouldn't say that, but uh, you, you might be. Uh uh, you might be uh, closer to some of the youngest <laughs> the, way thing, the way people are living nowadays so anyway uh, Leo Silch who is a premier wedding photographer Leo tell him about tell him about the way photography's evolved over the years you know you know the whole nine yards well it's just been phenomenal of course you all know how digital age has changed everything the big picture and everything and it's especially true I think in digital photo in, in wedding photography I used to lug around three medium format sized cameras two big camera bags it was a lot of work and also I was limited by the number of shots I took by the, how much film I was given by uh, who I was shooting for uh, nowadays of course one nice little camera zoom lens I can make a sepia black and white I zoom in zoom out 
a big, big, big difference. Plus, of course, seeing the work. I, in the old days, didn't see my work for sometimes two weeks. <laughs> I didn't have a screen. I didn't have Photoshop. I had to know what I was doing. That's what I bring to the party, experience. If there's one word I can give you to take away from this show today, and be sure and come and visit, experience. Go with experience. Go with the experience, go with the pros. You know, there has a lot to do uh, with experience. I mean, say a photographer that's been doing a wedding two or three years, great. More power to them. I'm sure they're great with technology and everything, but they don't have not got the full tilt boogie as far as working <laughs> with clients, brides and grooms, positioning them at the right time. Uh, and, and other obstacles, weather, emotions, there you uh, shall go. we say the over-imbibing uh, uh, guests, uh, uh, exposures, dark areas, bright areas, uh, emergencies, you know, uh, ripped uh, tuxedos, uh, missing people. Uh, I've had a heart attack at one of my uh, uh, receptions many years ago. Holy mackerel. And to be able to deal with all that takes experience. <laughs> you, better, you better believe it. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're here at the Tacoma. Not, no, not Tacoma. Where the hell? We're in Everett. Angel of the Winds. Angel of the Winds, yeah. Last week we were at Tacoma. Yeah. I mean, it happens so fast. It happens so fast that... Uh, uh, next uh, uh, October 7th we're going to be in Bellevue at the Maiden Bower Center and I, are, you, are you going to Ballingham with me? I'll be there Ballingham? Yep too Ballingham too Yep Alright my man I love to travel Okay here we go ladies and gentlemen come on down today Everett we're in Everett, Washington we're at the Angel of the Winds Arena formerly the Xfinity, Xfinity Arena Leo, you got a hot one. Get over there and talk to him. You're listening to Viva ENT, ladies and gentlemen. We're live at the Angel of the Winds Arena. And Aaron, I, I, I think this is, I've met you before, maybe. Yeah, I, I've yeah. seen you around for yep, sure. Yep. Tell our listeners all about your company, your website, your pricing, anything you want to say. Sure, sure. So I'm Aaron. I'm the owner of Seattle Face Booth. We do photo booths for all types of events. We have traditional, we have open air, um, and all of our photo booths are all inclusive. They come with a full-time attendant, unlimited prints. Um, a digital copy. I like copy. unlimited prints. That's cool. Yeah, digital copy at the end of the event. That digital copy not only has the in the photo strips, but also the individual pictures, as well as an animated GIF. Um, we have a ridiculous props collection. Pretty much anything you, anybody could imagine, we probably have it. Um, or we bring in a fantastic assortment. Um, we are running a special for the wedding show, and that special is two hours for four twenty-five. Once again, all inclusive. Um, three hours for 550 and four hours for 650. If they book today, we're also knocking off a, a, a little bit more and we're also including a photo guest album package. That's a hell of a doggone good deal because I, I know that most photo booths uh, are at least 200 bucks an hour and you're given a, a, a lot of photo booth companies won't do less than three hours. Right. So you're really offering a great deal here to all the people that come to the show today. And uh, let's get your website. Did you tell them sure. our web, your website? Our website is Seattle Face, as in your face, booth, B-O-O-T-H. Dot com. So once Very again, that's cool. SeattleFaceBooth.com. Good luck at the show today. Thank it's you. a pleasure to have you yeah, on. Thank you. Thanks for okay. having us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are here live, live, I tell you. We're live at the Angel of the Winds Arena. It's, all, it's a new name, isn't it? It is. It is. And this is Pearl, right? Pearl with the Men's Warehouse. Pearl with the Men's Warehouse. How cool is that? It's pretty awesome down here today. I'll tell you one thing. There's nothing like a sharp-dressed man. Amen to that. And we can dress them any way you want them. I'm saying, sister, you know, clothes make a man. Rain shines, later snow. And, you know, it's great that Men's Warehouse has such a, a, a great variety of tuxes 
in everything that you do. Tell our listeners what's going on with you today here at the show. Specials the whole nine yards. Well, actually, today we're not offering just rental on tuxedos, but we are doing custom-made suits now Holy at the men's mackerel. warehouse. We me. are offering 10% off the custom-made. Pick Yikes. out your fabric, your lining, put your wedding day, your bride's name inside of it, whatever you want comes with the suit. Aye, 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 aye. And we're doing retail wedding packages where your guys can own their suit, shirt, and tie for 60% off original value. And we are also doing rental in many, many colors and five different cuts from extreme skinny wow. all the way up to the bigger guy. It's like rain, it's like sunshine on a cloudy day here. It is, especially today. You can use a little sunshine. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, so say, for instance, I wanted to get a tux suit. Are you saying, you're saying tux suits? Tux or suits, you pick. Say if I wanted to get a tux, especially made for me, what would be the ballpark? You, they start at three ninety five. Oh my gosh! And that is custom made for you. You pick out the fabric, you pick out the collar, you pick out the lining inside of it. Yikes! Yeah. That, and you get ten percent off of that. So it's three ninety five minus the forty bucks. So what are you getting it for? Three. You got a nice big double booth here, uh, and uh, you got some stuff in the booth. Um, Tell us, tell us more about what's going on. We got in the booths. We actually have all of our minerals. The blues and the grays are pretty popular this year. So we do have the new royal blue and the deep blue navy edge lapel and the charcoal grays. We got some of the suits that we rent as well as some of the stuff that we sell. Uh, even for newborns, we have tuxedos from size one all the way up. So if you have a little baby that needs to be in it dressed in a tux, you can own that for 35 bucks. That's so we've oh marked man. down everything today to match the wedding show. So it's a good day to come out here and shop till you drop. That is incredible. Incredible. I can't believe it. Well, Pearl, tell our listeners, website, whatever the information is they need to yeah, get you. Yeah, so I am the Linwood store. We are the biggest store. We actually have 1,500 stores nationwide. Oh, my God. You can go to menswarehouse.com to register. If you can't get to the bridal show, although we'd love to see you here, we got you on uh, menswarehouse.com. Join for the Everett show. We'd love Great. to see you on there. Also, again, you can go in there, build your tuxedo online, or go to any store and pick up at any location of all 1,500 stores nationwide. Holy mackerel. I can't believe it. It's a pleasure to interview, and thanks for being on Viva e and Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. We are at the Angel of the Winds Arena in Everett at the Wedding Expo today, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be here today till 3 o'clock. You're listening to Viva e and This is your host, Johnny the Capo. I am with one of my most favorite people in the whole wide world, the famous, the fantastic... <laughs> Bella Jovan, she is premier belly dancer in, not the Northwest, in the entire world. <laughs> and, and not only that, Bella dances all over the world. She's been in Mexico, she's been in Egypt, she's been, she, you've been everywhere. Say hi to our listeners, Bella. Hello everyone, thank you for that nice introduction. Oh, it's more than my pleasure, and you know, the good thing is it's true. Well, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, tell our, our listeners, you're, yes. you got a booth um, today at the Wedding Expo. And as a matter of fact, I met you three or four years ago yeah. at a wedding. Right, exactly. You were hired to perform at the wedding. It was one of the coolest things I ever saw. Thank you. And, um, and so basically that's, some people will say, well, why is a belly dancer at the Wedding Expo? Because... You have performed for wedding receptions. Oh, yeah, many times. Many and, times. Yeah, in Egypt, too. I mean, I like you said, I've done it all over the world. So it's been really fun to share with people's beautiful memories of their wedding day and to be a part of that special, special event. So... Yeah, not only are you a star, you're an international star, Bella. <laughs> well, thank you. It's very exciting, and I love being a part and just sharing the dance and the joy. And especially being here, it's really fun because a lot of times if they're feeling like, oh, well, I want to learn to dance, then I'll do bachelorette parties. So we can have the little parties at the house. I come over, I perform, and then I teach them to dance, bring hip scarves, and we do the whole thing. So it's really fun. Yeah. That's, that's right. It looks fun. It sounds fun. And um, tell our um, listeners about some of the 
shows you've done internationally recently. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I've done quite a bit of festivals. So my most recent was in Costa Rica. It was a beautiful festival down there. And of course, you get to enjoy the beautiful weather after you're dancing all weekend. So and then I've done um, India. I've danced there for three months and I did wow. weddings. Those were really um, glamorous weddings there and did lots of, you know, events, restaurants, all of that. So, yeah, I danced in China, Guangzhou. I did that for six weeks and we did um, outside. So that was kind of fun. It was at those entertainment um, venues. So you're just dancing four shows a day and seeing all kinds of fun people. And yeah, and I've taught lots of workshops. I, you know, and I danced in Mexico. We performed beautifully. Like I actually had some other girls come with me and then I taught workshops one on one, private sessions too. So, because people always, they want to learn too. So they love to watch, but a lot of times they want to, they want to learn. So, yeah. And then, um, uh, this is my second time being at this particular wedding expo, so it's really lovely here. And yeah, another thing that is really fun is I'm going to be doing doing more like birthday party special events lately. So that's been um, it's so fun to surprise. Like that's what I love with the weddings too. Is when I come on, no one is prepared that I'm going to be there. And so when I enter, they're all surprised, and I'm I'm dancing with my wings and sword, and then. And, and you get the bride and groom up to dance or whoever the partners that are getting married up to dance and then you start the whole party of dancing and it just turned into a lot of it's fun. It's like a conga line for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> well, people get really excited. You saw, yeah, a couple I'm years seeing, ago. I've seen you. Right. You perform and uh, it's, uh, no one's like you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. This has been really nice and thank you for having me on your show too. Always a pleasure on the show. You've been on the show in the past and I, yeah. I like you. Uh, Maybe in the next uh, month or so, maybe we'll get you on the regular show for about a half hour. Yeah, I that would, would love cool. that. That would be wonderful. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Bella, tell our listeners yes. how they can reach out to you. Right. Thank you. So, I have a website. It's www.bellajovan.com. I also have a YouTube. Very easy. You can just Google Bella Jovan YouTube, and you'll find tons of videos. And then my email, Bella Javon at Gmail and my phone number you can find on my website. So. You're all over the place, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very exciting. Viva Bella. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Bella Javon. It's a pleasure as always, my oh, dear. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'll see you later. Grazie. We got uh, uh, models uh, modeling gowns. We got dance performers. We have Bella. You have Viva Productions. Wedding DJ, wedding photography. Come up right now because we're hot. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back at the Angels of the Wind Arena. I'm here with Anya from Arthur Murray Dance Schools. And, uh, you know, uh, you guys just did a performance uh, about 20 minutes ago, which was fantastic. Oh. Tell our listeners all about what you're doing today here at the Wedding Expo, Anya. Yes, absolutely. So we are so um, blessed to be able to be a part of this. We are Arthur Murray Dance Studios, and we teach wedding lessons. We teach ballroom dancing. We teach Latin dancing, any kind of fun social dancing for couples activities, for single people just to enjoy and have exercise and stress relief. And so today we have several different performances where we will be demonstrating a mother and daughter dancing uh, with a couple of our instructors where you get to see kind of what social dancing can be like during your reception, as well as uh, we'll be doing demonstration of the first dance uh, with a couple of our instructors who just got married um, several months ago. So they get to do their first dance for you guys once more. And uh, then we'll also be doing a few uh, demonstrations of mother and husband uh, of the bride. Uh, we'll be doing that again tomorrow. So lots of fun uh, kind of visual demonstrations of what dancing can be like. 
Absolutely. And you know what, Anya, let our listeners know about how to contact you, how to get a hold of your website, all that stuff. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can contact us on the on our website, which is danceeverett.com. Uh, we are right on Evergreen Way in Everett. Uh, also on Facebook under Everett Arthur Murray, uh, as well as, uh, of course, you can call the studio anytime. We're open. We're a full-time school. We're open six days a week from noon until 9 p.m. So you can take your lessons at any time you are available, and we would love to help you. Again, this is the Arthur Murray School of Dance in Everett. Marvelous and wonderful. It was so nice to have you on my show, Viva ANT. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're here today until 3 o'clock at the Wedding Expo in Everett. And we're going to be here tomorrow, and Anya will be here too. Yes. That's right. So you got, uh, you, you got all kinds of stuff to look forward to. Come on down to the Expo right now. Thank you, Anya. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with one of my best friends of all time, Jessica, Jessica, <laughs> I was going to say the P too early, you Jessica Pecan. Jessica is with Pure Romance. She's been doing the wedding expos here with Brad Buckles and I for a long, long time. Yeah, God, yeah. like eight years, I think. I'm saying. I think so, something like that. I mm. came as a bride here 10 years ago. I know it. I remember it. I know. Yeah. I still have your business card. You're just like a little baby. I know, I was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Viva ENT. I have Jessica Pagan on. She's going to tell you all about what she does with Pure Romance. All right. Well, as he just said, I'm with Pure Romance. I've been with us, goodness, for eight years. Something along that line. It's been crazy. Um, I got all your romance needs. I'm over, as you walk through the main door, I'm about four aisles down. I got big old balloons over there. Um, pretty much what we're doing is we're booking ladies' nights, having some fun. Whether it be not a Santa part or San- naughty Santa parties, while wow, naughty Santa, bad that Santa, ten times best. Um, I do that. I do all sorts of ladies' nights, bachelor fun, everything like that. So come down, come pencil in your party, pop a balloon. Everybody goes home with a little goodie tonight. That's very wonderful. Cool. Now, are you going to be at the um, show that we're going to do in Bellevue on October 7th? Yes, I will be in Bellevue, and I also will be in Bellingham. I right. just left the Tacoma one, so cool. Um, yeah, I'm all over. You're all over the place. I'm all over. I get around. I love it. <laughs> and, you know, those parties are really fun, you know. Um, uh, I've, heard, I, I've heard about them, uh, and uh, I've seen a couple. I don't think I've been to one. You know, it's mostly a chick thing, right? It is mostly a chick thing, but I got everything from mild to wild for guys and girls. It doesn't matter. I got it. Very cool. Tell our listeners, Jessica, about how, how to contact you. Um, go ahead and give me a call. My phone number is 253-670-0735, or you can find me on Facebook under Jessica Pagan. Last name is P-A-G-A-N. Um, you can also go to my website at www.peerromance.com slash Jessica M. Pagan, P A G A N. Marvelous and wonderful. Thank you again. Yes, no, for thank being you. On Viva ANT. Yes. You are wonderful and marvelous. Thank you. Uh, you too, love. Thank Stay you. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We have more vendors coming on the show, folks. And I'm here with Jonathan LeBaron, right? Johnny, yes. All right, man. You know, uh, you've been at the wedding expos a lot. Yes. You got a great product, and it's really kind of a cool thing, especially for young people and people that are into nutrition. Tell our listeners all about your company and what you do, man. You know, I am an independent distributor. I'm an independent distributor for AdvoCare. I have been for 15 years, and I share product. I help people meet their goals in weight loss or in the gym. I'm 53, Johnny, and I've been using products for over 15 years. Wow. And it has just kept my youth, and I swing a hammer by day. I'm a contractor, so I am just passionate about the products and helping people earn income if they so desire. So if someone wants to get skinny or get great gains in the uh, gym, just send them over to me, and I will just take care of them and love on them. That is incredible, man. You know, you got a great booth there, and uh, you're going to be here tomorrow, too. Yes, sir. Do you have any product uh, that you want to talk about right now? I want uh, people to come over and get some mental clarity and focus. The drink is called Spark. I've got a couple of different flavors, and I'm going to give it to them for free and just give them a pamphlet to take home with them. Real sweet and simple. Very cool. Very cool, man. Well, you know, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, and I'm looking forward to working with you today and tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Tell our listeners about your website, contact info. Yeah, it's bye-bye bellyfat.com. <laughs>
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Johnny the Capo. Our show is Viva ANT. We've been on KLAY for almost six years coming up in December. And, um, you know, uh, people that have listened to our show know that we always have these great celebrity interviews that uh, I have in the can. Today we have the fabulous Larry Chanson from the Earls. And um, we have a great interview with him. I want you to stay tuned. I want you to listen to this show because it's, if you like uh, trivia, especially rock and roll trivia, um, you're going to love this show. I have always been and fascinated with the rock and roll artists that uh, have come out, you know, from 1955 to present day. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy to bring you another great interview. Also, want to talk to you about the Landmark Convention Center in Tacoma. I am director of sales there, and I have lovely venues to show you. We can do weddings from for 50 people up to 700 people. So we have the Temple Theater. We have the Plaza Grand Ballroom, the Roof Garden Ballroom, the Gothic Ballroom, just to mention a few. You can reach me at 253-272-2042. You have a wedding or event coming up, call me, Johnny the Capo. So uh, you got to come up to the expo today, folks. Also, I'm performing with my band, and I have open mic at the beer garden at the hub, Harmon Hub in Tacoma. It's not the Harmon downtown. It's the one up in the stadium district. I have open mic. If you want to sing, you want to bring your acts, come on up. We're going to put you on stage. You can sing with the band. You can sing to a karaoke track, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can sing or play with the band. You can bring guitar. Uh, I got a drummer and bass player you can play with. My band, Johnny and the Bad Boys, we're going to be performing from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock uh, in the Bear Garden, weather permitting. If the weather goes bad, we're going to go inside to the event center. So don't forget, Harmon, Tap Room. Open mic, Johnny and the Bad Boys. We're going to rock the house, and you can you can sing and play with me, and rock rock the house yourself. <laughs> so, don't forget Viva Viva Dash Productions dot com. We are uh, at the expo today, and we are happy to talk to you about any kind of thing you want to do: wedding, casino parties, private parties, corporate parties. You know. Viva ENT, like Viva ENT Talk Radio, folks, on Facebook. So w there you go. And stay tuned for this great, marvelous, wonderful interview with Larry Chance, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And thank all the vendors for being on the show today. But don't go nowhere. Stay tuned. Gentlemen, you're listening to Viva ENT. We're live on the air here in Seattle, and I'm here with my co-host Dion Shaw and Brad Buckles, and also, of course, the greatest producer in Seattle. <laughs> it's Eric C.C. Ryder. Eric C.C. Ryder, and um, we have our talent coordinator Jerry Osborne on the air with our special guest, Mr. Larry Chance of the Earls. Who you just heard a little bit of right. as we came back that, in. That was fabulous. Uh, Remember then, big I, hit for I, them. I, I was singing it, man. I'm telling you. Uh, well, Jerry? Yeah, I, I, I'm happy to say that probably about eight different major cities had Remember Then in the top ten. And even on the national charts, the Billboard, the Record World, the Cashbox, it was in the top 25. So we're talking a major hit there. And I think... That that little bit of revival of the great doo-wop and group harmony sound was part of what kind of gave it a second time around 
like from the 50s to the 60s. And I think this song was one of the ones that inspired that uh, transition. So, Larry, if you want to talk a little bit about that, you know more than I do, but th that's my thought on it. Uh, it's very possible. Um, I won't take credit for it, but um, <laughs> it, it kind of took, took due up into the 60s, I think. Yeah, you know, um, that era, that time, it was a magical time. Everybody was happy. Everybody was singing. You know, the doo-wop, uh, you guys, Dion and the Belmonts and uh, the Diamonds, everybody was just uh, on fire then. I think the music reflected that. You know, it was a happy time, and, and it seemed to be a happy time musically. Uh, our songs talked about love. I'm not looking for love, or I lost love, or I want love. Or... <laughs> right. And, and, of course, there were some novelty songs, you know, but uh, I think I think the, the, the music and, and the times, kind of came together. It was a happy time. Happy time. You know, my co-host earlier were talking about the wonder and the beauty of the harmony. Well, the harmony is what I, I lived for. You know, um, we began the group, we started the group in, in, in the second floor boys room at Evander Child High School in the Bronx, New York, and uh, what we loved was hearing that harmony bounce off the tile walls. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. That yeah, vibration. Had great acoustics. Yeah, the, that vibration oh, is an energy. Yeah, I I used to love singing in the in the halls in the school. <laughs> we also took the elevated train from Gun Hill Road in the Bronx. We'd take it to 149th Street because they were at one underground, and so we'd get out and we'd sing there as the people were walking by with again with tile on the walls, and you had that built-in um, uh, echo system. Right, it was wonderful. Sound sound like reverb or digital delay going on. <laughs> Yeah, looking. We were always, as they see old songs, says, looking for an echo. Larry, did any of you record before the Earls? No, none of us recorded before the Earls. And how did you come up with the name? I stuck my finger in the dictionary. No way. <laughs> and it said, well, you know what it was? We were originally called the High Hatters. Right. And our plan was to go out and get white tails and tucks with patent leather shoes and spats. And and uh, canes and top hats and uh, hey. scar silk scarves, but we had no money. <laughs> so who wanted to be called the Majestics? Everyone had a different name, and I said the only fair way is we open up a dictionary and put a finger in it, whatever it lands on, that'll become the name of the group. And so what was the actual? On, what was the actual word that it fell on? Earl, nobleman of high rank. Oh, oh like go. the Duke of Earl. Oh, I and love it. Yeah, we'll be the Earls. Had we gone up to Duke, Ohio, we'd have been Duke. the ears. <laughs> <laughs> you could have been named the Aardvarks. <laughs> <laughs> First word in the dictionary. <laughs> Actually, it should have been the Oddballs, because we all were. Well, it seemed to work for you. So but that, so but that, that wasn't your first record, though. Your first record was uh, Life is But a Dream, right? That was our first charted recording, yes. And that was on Rome Records. Yeah. Wow. And that was a regional hit too in the Northeast. Yes, very much so. Let me let me and, let um, me let me let me ask you a question. Rome Records was that an Italian uh, owned uh, record company? <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. It was owned by Trade Martin, who, who incidentally also put songs on the charts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think he had a song called "That Stranger Used to Be My Girl" that went top twenty. Oh yeah, and, and he produced uh, "Life Is But a Dream" and him and uh, Johnny Power, and um, that label was distributed by Triadex, which was an outfit owned by Bill Buchanan of Buchanan and Goodman fame. As uh, most uh, uh, record uh, companies uh, from back east, uh, New Jersey, New York, were pretty much. Uh, Italian rand. Am I am I correct? Hey, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I have to go any deeper than that. Yeah, we'll, we'll kind of leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what was your uh, relationship with Old Town? Was, would you consider that a, a good match? Oh, it was wonderful. It gave, you know, it gave me my biggest hit. Yeah. And we, we also charted with Never and... Uh, Eyes bubbled under, so we had quite a bit of success with Old Town Records. Well, never has the same sound as Remember Then, but didn't you just recently do a ballad version of Never? Yes, we did. 
Wow. You know, most most groups that did what we did with Life Is What A Dream. You took a a slow song, a ballad, and you jazzed it up. And one day I said, well, what would happen if we took one of our up tempos and decided to do it as a, as a ballad? And so we, we we played around with Never and it worked. Wow. And that's on your new album, right? It's on one of our recent albums, yes. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to say that you are still out there. You're still performing. Uh, you're busy all the time. And this is what we like is people from that age that are still alive, first of all, and secondly, they're active. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, thankfully, I'm both. <laughs> we noticed uh, that right away. <laughs> and uh, I'm still active, still performing. I performed last night, and uh, again this Sunday I'm performing again. And uh, we were in Germany do upping last year. We'll be in Spain in February. And the odd thing is do up is still big. It seems all over the world, except in the United States. Yeah, that's that's odd. Uh, uh, and uh, it gets to my point that I was saying earlier. I don't think that uh, the doo wop uh, uh, gets the credit that it deserves. I I, I completely agree. Yeah, I, I think know, it was a unique a unique form of Americana. Right. I think it kept a lot of kids out of trouble. We right. We signed on the street corners. And uh, that was our life. You know, we'd get out of school, and first thing we'd want to do is sing, sit on the park benches and sing. And I think that's something that's missing today. I really do. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, street corners, uh, you know, in Jersey and New York and all over, you know, all over the United States, uh, especially back east. So, um, you know, they were into that type of thing, and it was a, it was a magical time. It was a magical sound. And, yeah. and uh, artistically... I don't think that uh, it gets uh, the credit that it deserves. But, you know, if you really think about it, it's big all over the world. It's big in Europe. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it does get the credit it deserves because people all, all over the world love it, and, and, and they're still coming back to it. Well, I Lindsay just got a, a, an email with a, uh, a video of a, a group in Spain performing never. Huh? And they did a wonderful job on it. Cool. In English? Yeah. In, uh, in English, yes. Well, it lends a new genre to be explored by um, a new generation in the United States. Um, and there's something about it that lends hope and happiness and bubbliness. And it's like, you know, you can love again. You know, there's, yeah, it's, it's out there. It's a happy music, and I think a lot of the kids today... Um, perhaps through the, the fact that the uh, parents play it, on, play it at home. And a lot of kids, I'm noticing, as an example, last night we did an outdoor show in Yonkers, New York, and there were a lot of young people there. And it always surprises me, but uh, it's good to see. I also think the fact that uh, groups like Boyce to Men uh, recording things like In the Still of the Night again. and uh, Oh, yeah. You know, Millsaps uh, lost in the 50s. Mm -hmm. Help help introduce that music to the younger people. Mm -hmm. You know, today you don't even hear music with real horns or real violins. I know, it's, it's uh, trippy. Everything's hand music. And, uh, <laughs> it's a pity, I mean. Uh, you're right. Start. You're right, Larry. I, th I think a shout-out should go, too, to uh, PBS for all that they've done to get these acts back on the air. Oh, absolutely. Not only that, but, you know... Um, my act was pretty much a, a tri-state act, uh, Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. But now, since those PBS shows, it's opened up the entire nation. Indeed, the world. I do up in Germany last year, and in February, I'll be doing up in Spain. So it's really opened it up. Looking back to the golden age, Larry, uh, there are some lead singers that I recall just being above and beyond the normal level of, of talent. And I'm wondering what you might have thought, and maybe still do, about people like Tony Williams or Willie Winfield. Do those people stand out to you as being something special? Oh, my God, certainly. Uh, I still have the opportunity to work with, with Willie. And I'll tell you the odd thing. He always came up to me as did uh, his piano player who wrote, Life is what a dream. Yeah, Why because you did his song. You work with us. 
And I said, I don't perform it because it's called respect. Hmm. You know, and then, uh, I always thought if you couldn't do it better, do it differently. That's cool. And that's what we did. But uh, Willie's a, a, a true gentleman and one of my idols, as was Tony Williams. What a and singer. certainly a oh, Johnny yeah. Maestro. Mm-hmm. Oh, the crash, Johnny Maestro yeah. was a cut above, a, a cut above everyone. And, uh, that's right. You know, some of them some of them were just incredible. Have you ever worked or, or met Richard Blandon of the Dubs? Oh, absolutely. Another great singer. Yes, I still work with Cleveland Still all the time. Wow. Just keep keeping the, the group going. Yep, I've had the good fortune of working with all of them. You know, as a kid, you're singing on the corner, and, and years later, they're your peers and your buddies, you know? Yeah. It still uh, it never ceases to amaze me. How lucky I've been. Well, you know, uh, singing uh, really uh, makes your heart and your spirit uh, alive. You know, I- I'm a singer. I sing every single day. There's not a day that goes by that I don't sing. And, and it keeps you young. Keeps you young. And when you're when you know when you're done singing, you feel like the king yep. of the whole wide world. <laughs> it's hard to explain to anyone who who doesn't do it. But and then you know. Uh, Certain songs, you know, that, that put a smile on people's faces, and then there are songs like uh, uh, we recorded a song called "I Believe," right? And I dedicated it to a former member who passed away in the service, service, you know, in, uh, in our country service, and uh, I dedicated to him each and every performance since he passed. Is that the? Uh, and I also dedicated to our, our vets, especially our Vietnam vets and our young men and women in uniform, and. Um, I see many tears in eyes when I perform it. And again, when you realize that you can bring this emotion out of people and or put a smile on their face or a tear in the eye, there's nothing better. Is that uh, the same, I, the, the gospel song, I believe? Yeah, the one that Elvis did. I believe forever. And by the way, speaking of Elvis, Johnny, you don't know this, but uh, Larry and the Earls did a song titled Elvis, He's, He's Alive. No kidding. Yes. How did that come about? Sing, sing it for me. <laughs> well, again, again, one of my heroes. Tell us about so, it. Uh, one of the guys got together and he had the idea. He says, you know, the, you think there's so many rumors. You think maybe he's alive. And Right. I said, I, I don't know. You know, one of <laughs> this crazy world, what might be. And uh, so we decided to write a song called He's Alive. Wow. Can, is that on Spotify? Can we get that on Spotify? Can we hear it? It's on uh, Larry Chance and the Earl's website. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll have to go on and listen to it. That is the website, LarryChanceandTheEarls.com. Excellent. Yeah, that one was recorded um, as a uh, country tune on a solo uh, album I did, an EP. Cool. And also it's going to be out on something called The Rare Run Release Volume 1 Wow. Uh, as a doo versions. Oh, cool. Actually, there'll be two versions of it. We hate, we hate to talk about Elvis on this show, really, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> we'll push through it a little so bit more. I loved Elvis. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Jerry uh, feels the same. I feel the same. Uh, and uh, my co-host uh, feel the same. Uh, okay, it's unanimous. And even Eric C.C. Ryder, <laughs> named after uh, a Presley tune. <laughs> yep, yep. He was did, did, you know them? did you there meet him, Larry? People. I'm sorry? I said, did you ever meet him? No, unfortunately, I never had the pleasure of meeting him. Yeah. Well, well, well that's one of the ones, you know, I've met everyone else, Jerry Lee Lewis, that little Richard. I uh, uh, love little Richard. But, but, the only one I really never got to meet that I wanted so much to meet was Elvis. Well, I remember the first time I met Bill Haley. He was the first person that I ever walked up to and said, Mr. Haley, can I have your autograph? Hey. <laughs> and I, I had already recorded, you know, and uh, I got to share the stage with him. But that was the first one that I actually wanted to walk up and say, may I have your autograph, sir? What? And he couldn't have been kinder or nicer. Yeah, nice guy. Well, I'm I'm going to tell you a little story, Larry, and and I don't know if I've told this story to Jerry or not, but it's 1968. I'm living in Las Vegas. I just got uh, home from school. Uh, the, my neighbor is a security guard that worked at the Aladdin Hotel, and he knew that I was a big Elvis fan, and he came over, and knocked on my door because he knew I just got home from school. He said, "Johnny, Johnny, Johnny." I go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." 
He said, Elvis just checked into the Aladdin Hotel last night. I go, oh, I go, you're kidding. He goes, no, man, he's there right now. I jumped on my motorcycle. I drove to the Aladdin Hotel. I came up the escalator to the old Aladdin Hotel, the original Aladdin Hotel. And I rode up that escalator. And when I got to the top of the escalator, Lord Almighty, I feel my temperature rising. Standing right in front of me was the king of rock and roll. He's he's he's, uh-huh. he's 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 signing out autographs. There was about twenty um, women around him, and he was signing autographs. And then um, and then he moved from there, and he went to the crab table. They roped off the crab table, and Elvis shot crabs for about an hour. Uh, he was there with Joe Esposito, Red West, and uh, uh, I walked up to walk, walked up to it. Uh, uh, told the security guard that was standing in front of him, hey, I just want to get his autograph. Uh, n- not only did I get his autograph, I shook hands with the king. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's been at the intro. Yeah, 1968. Wow. The album out at the time, Jerry, was Speedway. And if I would have had the album with me, I would have had him autograph it. But uh, it's a true story. And uh, I stood there and, and watched him shoot crabs for about an hour. <laughs> well, you never have told me that story, but I'm glad you did. And having met him at that time, and now talking to Larry Chance, your life is complete. Right. I'm sad. I'm telling you. Now we'll have to all sing it together. <laughs> I'm, I'm certainly no Elvis. Wow. What a magical moment. Yeah, I would say. It was a great moment. So, uh, Larry, uh, you're you're still performing. You're out there rocking and singing. Uh, and... Uh, uh, are you located back east? Do you do most of your shows back east? Uh, the majority, yes. Cool. Well, that's a great market. But we get out to we get out to Vegas. And we oh. get out to uh, cool uh, Baton Rouge and New Orleans and uh, Chicago and Florida. All the great spots. I guess Seattle's not on your immediate list. Uh, no, not at the moment. <laughs> but when I was doing Alaska cruises and, and I did the recovery cruises. We uh, we'd go to Seattle and Portland, beautiful city, by the way. Oh yeah, it is. Well, if you get back this way, uh, we're all going to come and see you. Oh, oh definitely. I'll, say, I'll hold you to that. Do that. Well, Larry, it's a, it's it's, a, it's been a pleasure to have you on our show today. Tell our listeners how they can access your website, everything that that you have that that our listeners can uh, get to you. Well, Larry Chance and the Earls dot com. And uh, it'll tell them where we're appearing and uh, all of our uh, cool. albums and CDs or T-shirts. And you can hear and the Elvis thing. They can, they can friend us on Facebook. Very good. We have a Larry Chance and the Earl's Fan Club page. Cool. I also have personal pages, and I, I respond to all my uh, fans. and So we're always available to them. Well, I can vouch for that because that's how we got them on the show. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much well, for being on the show. Larry, Jerry, why don't you stay on the air so you can tell our listeners about our upcoming guests. I'll do that. Thank you, Larry. Well, thank you so much for having us. And we'll talk again. Let's go out with a little bit of remember. Remember, remember, remember. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, what what a great guest, huh? Awesome guest. Yeah, great stories. Yeah, Yeah, really good stories. Everything was absolutely fabulous. Hey, I don't bring you any stiffs. No, you don't. (laughs) (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) So, Jer, who do we have coming up? Paul Evans, next week. Yeah, we played I Gotta Know. I know, I, I Gotta Know, I, I gotta Know. know gotta... <laughs> I Gotta Know, The Next Step is Love, Something Blue, One of and my Blue favorite. River. Something Blue. I love that song. Oh, yeah, it's a beauty. It is a Brad song. won't like it as much, but it's still a good song. <laughs> well, I appreciate you throwing that in. Today's song was actually pretty good. Not bad. You know, uh, uh, the song that he wrote, The Next Step is Love, maybe Eric can get it real quick. The Next Step is Love has a little bit of a Beatle flavor in it. You Am I it. right, Jerry? What's that? The Next Step of, is Love has a little bit of Beatle flavor in it. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I guess you could it's got the fr- somehow it's got, say it's got, that, it's got, but it's, it's I, got I don't the fr- make the connection myself, only because we're talking about a group versus a, 
uh, a solo singer and a whole different arrangement with a, a lot of orchestration that you didn't get uh, in the Beatles songs at that time. But right, but it's know, got so, this, yeah, I guess it's, I, I it's don't really make this, that connection. It's got this little bit of French horn. Da, 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 it kind of reminds me of a Beatle thing. A we'll find bit, out, Jerry. A little bit of Beatle flavor. Say yeah. that three times. We'll, well cover Eric this next is week. Going to, uh, he's, going, he's putting it on right now. Let us find out let's, about let's it. See if, let's see if Brad agrees. Great song, one of my favorite Presley tunes. Listen to it. Made some faces at some people in the park and didn't bother to explain. Fun, fun, look at us run, going nowhere special, really fast. That's a Beatle thing, man. Sergeant Pepper. There you go. There you go. I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. There's a little bit there, Jerry. Well, you know, we got to ask Paul Evans about that because he wrote it. I'd I be glad to ask him. But did he orchestrate it, too? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Probably not. So, so but here, here's another question for him. Did he perhaps record a demo of it himself? Uh, yeah. That's a really good question. Yeah. Huh? And I do know one thing. Even though he wrote four songs for Elvis... That in total sold approximately four million records, I oh, might add, mm-hmm. because the writer of a B side gets just as much as right. the writer of the A side. So when something like Are You Lonesome Tonight goes double platinum, so does uh, the reward to Paul Evans. Because that's the way that works. Well, but anyway, w- w- we want to know uh, why. With all that going on, he somehow never really met him in person. I know, and, and I'm and I shook hands with the king. What the heck? So we got to talk to him about that too. <laughs> okay, uh, Jerry, we, we're down to about uh, thirty seconds. Tell our listeners how to access your books. And, and, and did Barbara send me a book? Uh, I don't know anything about that. What? If if you ordered one, she would have. I I don't know a thing about well, that. Have her mail me a book. <laughs> And uh, tell our listeners how to get a hold of you, your books, the whole nine yards. You've got 20 well, seconds. Please send him that book. Really. Everything, uh. everything is at jerryosborne.com. All the links are there to my radio shows, to our books, to our, our weekly newspaper column. You know, everything is off of that one home page. Okay, Jerry. Pleasure to have you on the so show. be there or be square. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Dion. Thank you, Eric Easy Rider. You listen to Viva MT. We'll dig in now. See you later because you know you are a fine... Sweet potato. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.